Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson. This is COVID-19 update, March 25th, 2020. All data is of 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to account for reporting. All of our videos can be found on roominfo.com slash blog. Current trajectories are the same as yesterday. You'll see the United States is still growing exponentially. Italy has tailed off. If we zoom in on Canada, we see we have had significant growth through day 10, day 11, day 12, and day 13 after we've hit 150 cases. Cases per million population, Italy is now almost at 1,200. Spain, Germany, France, Britain, the United States, and Canada. And if we zoom in on Canada, we're still second at this point in time in cases per million population. Here are the percentage of deaths. Italy topped 10% today. Canada was at 1% and the United States at 1.42%. If we look at the numbers, Spain had the biggest jump today from 500 to over 800. Italy leveled off. Canada went from 3 to 10, and the United States from 151 to 235. Here are the growth factors for COVID-19. And you can see we've leveled off as expected. We're at 0.88 today in Canada. The average growth factors any range from anywhere from 1.2 to about 1.4. Canada is a 1.37. And we have the largest growth factor over the last three days, with Italy the only country coming in under 1. Let's talk about immunity and a simple explanation. So an antigen is a toxin or another foreign substance that gets into our body and it induces an immune response. Okay, this might be a bacteria or a viral infection like the coronavirus. And as a response, our body makes antibodies, which are immunoglobulins. They're large Y-shaped proteins. They're made by B cells or plasma cells. And they're used by the immune system to identify and neutralize foreign objects such as bacteria or viruses like the coronavirus. And when the coronavirus enters our body, our body makes these immunoglobulins, and the immunoglobulins bind onto the virus and neutralize it. And the immune system remembers, because if that coronavirus comes back again, the immune system says, aha, I remember this. It makes those antibodies very quickly, and they bind on to the coronavirus and neutralize it very quickly. Do you have immunity forever? The answer is no. Now, some viruses confer strong immune responses that can last up to 10 years, while others, perhaps only a couple of years. And the other key point is if a virus mutates, the immune response doesn't work very well. So if this is our virus and it mutates to something like this, for example, our immunoglobulin that worked for the first virus, unfortunately, doesn't work for the mutated virus. So one of the treatments that's right under our skin and within us is called immune globulin. If you have been infected with the coronavirus, you make antibodies to the coronavirus. You've got all these antibodies. Now, if we can take some of those antibodies out of your blood and concentrate them and give them to somebody else who is sick with the coronavirus, could we potentially mop all of their viral particles and uh, help treat them? And there's clinical trials going on in the United States. Let's look at the new cases per day. Okay, this is our graph where cases increase initially, they plateau, and then they fall. Let's see what we look like today. Here's Italy. So Italy's looking definitely more like a normal distribution. Here's Spain. They had a jump today, unfortunately. Germany, France, United Kingdom, United States, and Canada. Here's our March Madness calendar from yesterday. Let's see where we are today. Italy added 4,000 cases. United States added 13,000 cases. Spain, 10,000 cases. Germany went up 5,000. France, 3,000. United Kingdom, about 2,000. And Canada went from 2.8 thousand to 3.4 thousand. So just about 600 cases. This is the cases per thousand hospital beds. And if we zoom in on Canada here, we'll see, yes, we're strongly in second uh, again today. This is the trajectories of all countries, um, and this is from the 24th, and this is from today, the 25th, and you can see the United States is almost in the lead now. And these are the deaths, um, and you'll see the deaths are rising to Italy and Spain uh, more rapidly than they certainly did in China, okay? And this is from the 24th, and now this is from the 25th. The U.S. has almost overtaken Iran, so they're almost beating Iran here. Um... United Kingdom and Canada's on the map down just below Denmark. 
Now, if we look at the subnational regions in each country, this is from the 23rd, here's the 24th, and here's the 25th. And the areas you want to look at here are New York, the Ile de France, uh, Catalonia, Madrid, and Lombardia. London, England is also in the mix there as well as leading the race. Okay, so just where are these regions? Well, if we look in Spain, Madrid is uh, in central Spain, and that's the area there. The Catalonia region is around Barcelona. So they're the two biggest hit places in Spain. And Paris, the, the, the Ile de France, which is the area right around uh, Paris, France. Uh, in Italy, the uh, Lombardia is right around Milan. And New York City uh, has been very hard hit. This is Wuhan, China. Okay, and you'll see Shanghai just off to the right. And this is Evansville, Indiana. Now, I don't think they have many cases, but this is a shout out to all my cousins, Sandy and Jackie, Stephen, Sam, Aaron, Allie and Steph, all in Evansville. Stay safe, guys. Here's Canada. The most number of cases is in Quebec. Ontario is second and BC is third. But as a percentage of the population, Quebec is 0.016%. BC is 0.014%. Ontario is 0.005%. So Ontario is doing actually very well. Kudos to Doug Ford in Ontario. And New York, 30,000 cases though. And their number would be 0.15%. So you can see New York completely overshadows Canada in terms of the number of cases. So remember, this is a very regional infection. Do your part in your community. Flatten the curve. Stay home, stay safe, and save lives.